One of the most underappreciated aspects of game development is balance, of incorporating all the desired mechanics in a way that makes sense and feels good to the player. It's tougher than it looks, and when a mechanic isn't fun, this is often why. A bad mechanic can be tolerable if it doesn't intrude too much on the gameplay otherwise, but sometimes they're just irritating enough that they taint the entire experience, such that you might even end up rage quitting. Life is short and there are more amazing games out there than anybody can ever play, so if a mechanic is souring the experience that much, why keep playing? This particular list was inspired by a recent Reddit thread and we've got 10 otherwise pretty entertaining games that all subjected players to gameplay systems which made the experience more tedious, frustrating and generally less of a blast than it should have been. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 precise video game mechanics that made you rage quit. Number 10. Malaria Far Cry 2 Far Cry 2 was, in many ways, a major step up from the original, though fully enjoying the sequel required coping with the game's infamous malaria mechanic. Within literally moments of Far Cry 2's opening, before you've even got your gun in your hand no less, you'll be stricken with your first bout of the parasitic infection, and every 30 minutes or so for the rest of the game you'll need to fend off an attack. A malaria fit is signaled by the screen tinting yellow, the player's vision blurring, and being unable to sprint or jump. The only way to set things right? Pop some pills, but in the event that you're out of medication, you'll pass out and wake up in a safe room. It's a mechanic infuriating enough that a PC mod was created which patched the illness out of the game entirely, though console players sadly weren't so lucky. All the same, even the game's lead designer Pierre Rivest later admitted that they made the malaria mechanic too aggressive, and it hasn't appeared in any Far Cry game since. Though malaria has its defenders, the mechanic, not the real life illness, it remains the epitome of gamey video game design intended purely to make everything more of a chore. Number 9. Inventory Management – Resident Evil Zero Resident Evil Zero is in many respects one of the most underappreciated entries in the legendary survival horror franchise, but it also pissed many fans off with one of its more radical gameplay changes. Zero introduced an overhauled inventory system which ditched the iconic item storage boxes from previous games, instead allowing players to just drop items on the floor. In theory, this new system meant that players didn't have to find an item box in order to free up inventory space. But in reality, it simply meant they ended up doing a ton more backtracking in order to return to items they'd previously dropped. This was only exacerbated by the fact that each character only has a stingy 6 inventory slots, which just isn't enough given how many weapons, rounds of ammo, health items and quest items the game asks you to juggle. Ultimately, it marked an attempt by Capcom to fix a quote-unquote problem that didn't really exist, to ditch the unrealistic storage boxes, which would magically transport all stored items to any box you opened, in favor of something more grounded. But Zero's inventory system really just generated so much tedious busywork that many players never even finished the damn thing. Number 8. Reversal Edge – Soul Calibur 6 Soul Calibur 6 was another successful entry into the hit fighting game franchise for the most part, albeit qualified by the inclusion of one widely loathed new mechanic, the Reversal Edge. Reversal Edge can be instigated by either player to initiate what is effectively a tied turning game of rock, paper, scissors in the middle of a fight, whereby both combatants have to choose whether to attack, guard, sidestep, crouch, and so on. Various options will defeat various other options, and it's up to players to learn which abilities are best suited to which fighters. But ultimately, fans have been complaining about Reversal Edge ever since the game's release, that beyond introducing an element of quasi-luck, it created a sluggish break in play and could be spammed by less experienced players, as proves especially frustrating during online matches. Needless to say, whenever Soul Calibur 7 is officially announced, it'd be pretty damn surprising if Reversal Edge made a not so illustrious return. Number 7. The Never Ending Dialogue Animal Crossing New Horizons Animal Crossing New Horizons is one of the all time great examples of a game that released at just the right time. Hitting the market literally days after COVID-19 was declared a pandemic and stay-at-home orders were administered, it provided relaxing, familiar comfort food at a time of major worldwide uncertainty. 
With many of us having considerably more free time to game at our disposal, we were perhaps more tolerant of Animal Crossing's tendency to talk, and talk, and talk, and basically never shut up. As chill as the core gameplay loop is, there's just way too much chatter interrupting the laid back vibe. It's hardly a new thing for the franchise, but once lockdowns lifted and people could freely go outside again, it's little surprise that many lost their patience with the game and effectively dropped it. That does nothing to diminish Animal Crossing New Horizons' role in curbing anxiety and depression during such a fraught period, but once the clouds lifted, many players simply decided they couldn't abide that relentless waffle any longer. Number 6. The Holographic Map – Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order's Metroidvania-like structure, which encourages players to return to its worlds later in the story to reach previously inaccessible areas, went down a storm with players, save for one bewildering misstep – that damn dirty map. The game's maps are holographically projected by Cal Kestis' droid companion BD-1, and while this sounds neat enough in theory, in reality the maps are so bafflingly hard to read that they end up making navigation feel like a pure chore. The opaque map design makes it more difficult than it should be to both discern your position and figure out a path through a level, with areas containing multiple levels often blurring into a light blue smudge. Combined with a lack of fast travel options, this made backtracking an absolute slog, especially on some of the more labyrinthine levels. Thankfully, at least, Respawn took the criticism to heart and significantly improved the map for the recently released sequel, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, where everything is more crisply defined and the game has Handily also features fast travel. Number 5. The Abbey – Marvel's Midnight Suns Marvel's Midnight Suns is, for the most part, one of last year's most underappreciated games. A Marvel-themed tactical RPG that benefited from its well-crafted card-based combat system and surprisingly involved narrative. The big problem, however, is the game's maddening amount of bloat. Outside of the core combat, you're forced to spend massive chunks of time hanging out at the Suns HQ, the Abbey where you'll have to manage your friendships with other heroes by doing activities like working out, playing video games and watching movies, and also running around various rooms to upgrade your gear and abilities. Though the Abbey is charming enough to begin with, considering that Midnight Suns is 30 hours long on the conservative side, and you'll spend many, many of those hours stuck in the Abbey doing basically the same repetitious tasks over and over again, it quickly becomes grating. Basically, there's a great streamlined 15-hour campaign inside of Midnight Suns, but the staggering degree of mobile game caliber deadweight attached to the legitimately excellent combat left many exhausted long before the finish line. Number 4. Fog of War – Wargroove Wargroove is a mostly terrific turn-based tactics game, albeit one that forces players to suffer through the ever-dreaded Fog of War mechanic. Fog of War is a mechanic which limits player visibility on the game map, meaning any enemy units concealed by the fog will effectively be invisible. This isn't inherently a bad gameplay system, but what ruins it is the fact that the enemy AI isn't governed by the same rules, and seemingly sees straight through the fog. In a table-flippingly blatant fashion, the AI will regularly respond to your movements as though the fog isn't there at all, effectively cheating the entire experience. Though Wargroove is still a blast in online multiplayer where no such shenanigans are possible, this realization prompted many players to ditch the campaign entirely in a fit of very justified anger. While there's presumably a technical reason why the AI doesn't adhere to the fog of war just as the player does, it unfortunately sours the single player mode. Number 3. Checkpoints – Hitman Absolution Hitman Absolution's more linear gameplay style proved underwhelming enough that it led to the series being rebooted in 2016. But the thing that stung the most? That horrific checkpoint system. Though most prior games in the series allowed players to save anywhere, Absolution threw this out and replaced it with a new system where you could only save progress at set checkpoints. More to the point, reloading from a checkpoint effectively reset the level outside of any completed objectives, bringing back any dead NPCs and getting rid of the disguise you were wearing when first using the checkpoint. Naturally, for a game so intently focused on trial and error, it pissed a lot of people off by working against Hitman's ethos of playful experimentation. The near-universal disdain for the checkpointing mechanic ensured that Hitman 2016 restored manual saves and overall persistence to the game world. Number 2. The Motorcycle – Days Gone 
Days Gone isn't a great game by any means, but delivered some solid enough zombie battling mayhem, albeit tethered to an exasperating travel and management mechanic pertaining to protagonist Deacon's motorcycle. First and foremost, Deacon's bike handles like a milk float in a snowstorm, ensuring it's a serious pain in the ass to navigate around trickier terrain and more to the point, it's just not fun to drive. Considering how much time you'll spend on the damn thing throughout the game, it's absolutely insane that riding it feels so rough and unintuitive. Tied to that, we have the incessant need to refuel the bike at excessively regular intervals, especially in the early hours of the game. Even accepting that Days Gone is a survival game at heart, this is a dead boring gameplay system that quickly ends up feeling like a job. Combined with the game overall just being way too long, it's little surprise that so many ended up bouncing off Days Gone long before the end. Number 1. Grinding for Grass – Demon Souls Demon's Souls may be a magnificent game, but it's tough to come across many defenders of its central healing mechanic. Players regain HP using grass, a common commodity that's in frustratingly short supply in the early stages of the game, forcing you to painstakingly farm it from one of a few specific areas. Given the scarcity of grass throughout the game world, this can turn those early hours into a tedious slog as you stop progressing in order to grind more grass. In an undeniably tough game, this feels like a lazy added obstacle. And while players were perhaps more forgiving of this mechanic in Demon's Souls' original release, considering that From Software's subsequent games came up with far more user-friendly methods of healing, like refilling your Estus Flask and Bonfires in Dark Souls, or most of Bloodborne's enemies dropping blood vials, it felt positively backwards when the remake was released in 2020. In fact, the remake went one step further and introduced a weight to grass, meaning your capacity was severely limited compared to the original game. Awful. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment box if you can think of any other precise video game mechanics that made you personally rage quit. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at JessMcDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.